First of all, welcome everyone. My name is John Cole. I'm the marketing manager here at Filmworks, and today we're joined by Gustavo Mendez, our product manager, and with Fabio Bedoya, our professional master trainer, who will be taking us through today uh, the OFX DVO pack in Resolve. And I just want to say a few things about um, you know the OFX uh, performance pack that's had a recent update, which is very exciting. So we've got two new uh, incredible DVOs that are now part of that pack. So decompress which is all about reducing banding and uh, removing macro blocking issues, as well as DVO Velvet, which is all about managing extreme noise, especially in at nighttime shots. Uh, but one of the biggest things which we're very excited about, and you've probably all seen on our socials and emails, is that the OFX is now compatible with M-series chips. So awesome stuff there. And we thought we'd get none other than the excellent Fabio himself uh, to demonstrate um, how the tools work in DaVinci Resolve and what they can do for your footage. So without further ado, I'll stop wittering on. And if you put any questions in the comments, I'll save those to the end and you can ask Fabio and Gus then. But without it, Fabio, let's take it away. Okay. Hello, everyone. So we're going to see different clips using the uh, multiple we have, uh, the multiple DBOs that we have. We're going to start with DBO brick wall. So DBO brick wall has two functions, two main functions. One is going to, the first one is going to be to to do like a like a um, frequency cutoff for for certain frequencies for certain frequencies that we don't want. Especially, let's say let was watch this clip. We can see that there's like some type of a horizontal no vertical uh, issue with the the sensor um, probably has uh, had some issues with the. Uh, debayering or the sensor had some problems. So we have these vertical lines here. So how do we get rid of this? Now, this is a this is not a common issue like 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 noise or this is not a common issue like grain. So this is mostly like a problem with the frequencies that we are seeing. So the, the way that the DBO brick wall works is that it it works like a like a frequency limiter. So if we use this from the get go, we're gonna get a, a good result. It's gonna be it's gonna be working exactly as we want from the get go. But we can use some of the settings here to kind of make it better. So uh, the first one that we have is what's gonna be the filter that we're gonna be using. Uh, we can use the rectangular filter, the rectangular filter with the sharp with the increased sharpness, a circular filter or a diagonal filter. This is this is gonna vary depending on the content that you wanna use or the content that you wanna master. So for this particular subject we're going to use the rectangular sharp and then we're gonna then we can start playing with this with this cut of frequencies so horizontal is going to be the horizontal lines and vertical is going to be the vertical uh, at the moment we only care about the horizontal filtering if you see it this is the most this is the the one that makes the most changes in the image so we're gonna make sure only to make the the lines disappear but without going all the way because if we go all the way we start losing detail so we don't want that we only want we only want to go exactly where the lines uh, start going blue where where they start to mix with the with the material and the vertical we in this particular case we don't really need it so if we if we go all the way down if we go full full um if we go to the full filter settings yeah we start losing detail on the, on the vertical line so we all we are, you're just gonna bypass it using 100 percent and since we are using rectangular sharp we can use an extra setting here that lets us determine what the size that we want to use of the filter we're going to use a small normal or large in this particular case we're going to use normal and if we want you can we can increase or decrease the sharpness in this particular case it's not going to do a lot because we don't have that much detail but if we you're going to pr probably see it here if we zoom in to the places where we where we have those details, yeah, you can see that we have made a lot of difference here. So another of the good uses that we have for for DBO brick well is for mastering uh, for for delivery. So problem is, let's say this picture. This picture doesn't have any issues. Like uh, like um, from the get go, you you are not gonna get like any issues from from this picture, but problem is that you have a lot of um, specular highlights. 
So those specular highlights, when you're trying to do some mastering or maybe you're, going, you're, going, you're trying to pass the QC of, of any platform, OTT or whatever, they might get you some flags. So by using uh, DBO Big Wall, you can chop up those those um, specular highlights and your, your video will be ready for mastering. So let's see here. So if we go here and we try to see this, the original one, you're gonna see the, the um, you're gonna see the uh, the waveform. How it's gonna slightly change only to only to diminish those those highlights, those frequencies that we don't wanna we don't that we don't wanna deliver that we don't wanna master for this particular uh, output. And it's gonna yield us a better result for for compression. It's gonna yield us a better result for any type of QC that we wanna do. So this is all, that is pretty much the functions that we that we're gonna use be using for big wall. The next one that we're gonna be seeing is DBO Chroma. Chroma is gonna be used mainly for two things. It's gonna be used for chromatic aberration. It's gonna be used for a, and also it's gonna be used for print alignment problems. So let's say <clears throat> you have some issues with um, with some of the channels being misaligned either in analog sources. Be the be the film or magnetic, or in uh, digital sources because maybe of an issue with the with the sensor, so or or the lens. So if we if we see this picture here, I mean, from the get go it doesn't appear to have many issues. Well, it has the the flicker. It's a positive print. It has a lot of uh, flicker. It has a lot of uh, dust and whatever. But if we see the the edges, especially here on the cross, we can start seeing like a board called a uh, color edge here. It's kind of greenish, um, yellow greenish hue that's coming out of the edge. So this is a print alignment issue. Well, well, the, the normal the way that maybe we can use some type of like if we use, we're doing like normal film film restoration, we can use some type of a, a DBO print alignment. But if we are here in Resolve, where we are here in uh, Premiere in the future, we can use DBO Chroma to fix this. The way that it works is that we just set this. Okay, let me check. Okay. We just use the strength here in order to diminish the 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 chroma the the, um, the colors that are getting out and the coarseness depending if we want it to be amplified or not so uh, so the the, um, the area of effect we want it to be amplified so in the end we get some kind of reset or of 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 a result similar like this uh you may need to be you need to be aware that if you go all the way especially with coarseness you may you may start to deteriorate some of the edges of the picture you may not wanna. You may wanna be aware of, especially in places like these, where you, where you can start to to introduce some artifacts. So, strength is gonna be the main one, and coarseness is gonna be something that you need to adjust depending on the footage, depending on the shot. But you can get quick results and good results like this, and especially on edges, you're gonna see the the um, the, the biggest change. So. Let's go now to DBO Clarity. DBO Clarity is uh, our, our, my, my preferred way of reducing no, noise or grain uh, in almost every source. I like the way that it works. I like that it's, uh, it's, a, it's a special and temporal filter, but it, it works like an, special, uh, and like an special filter because it doesn't give you like any, I haven't seen any temporal artifact in, in all the times that I work with it. But the, the main issue here is like, let's say. So, well, in this particular picture, we have two problems. The, 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 image, the, the image wasn't ba properly balanced. So you can see it here, the, the blue channel is completely lifted compared to the green and red channel. That we can work either after or before. I prefer to work it after. I prefer to have the, 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 the noise reduction and the grain reduction at at the at being the first step and then everything else uh, either corrections or 
extra extra layers to be after that so we can cache the the noise reduction because usually noise reduction tends to be uh, really hip, cpu consuming or gpu consuming so we need to we it's a best it's a good practice to have it at the, at the in the first step so if we see this picture yeah, we have a lot of like uh, smoke and the ladies are walking we have lights and if we, if we were using like a some type of temporal uh, filter that that wouldn't be properly calibrated we may introduce some ghosting here that's what i love um dry clean that's what i love clarity because even if you go all the way if you see the settings here i'm going all the way i'm going amount it's going to be to one aggression is to one uh i'm using quality because yeah it's gonna be a it's gonna yield a better result i'm trying to preserve more of the details and and i'm doing even an extra sharpness here even if i'm doing this i'm not i'm not introducing any type of motion artifact i'm not introducing any type of ghosting that is the is the issue with many of the noise reduction and rain, rain reduction uh, filters that we see in, in the market so clarity, I mean, most of the time, unless you have extremely, extremely heavy grain, it's gonna be, it's gonna yield you the, the best results. So next one is gonna be DBO decompress. So in order for me to show you exactly DBO decompress what, what it's doing, we need to find footage that has that extremely, I would say, um, that has this, Compression artifacts that are really noticeable. Um, I found this uh, artifact footage that is like from the uh, 80s, if I recall correctly. And you can see it. Uh, you can see it here. Uh, we have well, besides of the uh, of the of the problems that are inherited from the from the tape uh, from the tape source, you can also you can also find these macro blocks that are usually from MPEG compression. There is a lot of like chroma subsampling issues here. You can see it on his face, on his on his eyes. It's, um, the chroma is, is not properly it doesn't have enough information to to feel all all of the all of the all of the pixels. So so some of the chroma is, is like uh, you can see it like it's becoming like noise in some places. So. The, the good thing about DBO decompress is that you can use it as either as a middle step or as a beginning step for you to clean this type of footage. Because if you try using some type of noise reduction, even clarity here, it might get the work done, like doing some of the, 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 the uh, reducing some of the noise, but it's not going to it's not going to deal with the main issue that is the color banding or it's not going to deal with the main issue that is the macro blocking so we're going to start with doing with this so in in dbo decompress we have different settings here we have the chroma smoothness we have a uh, edge cleaning that's going to be the chroma smoothness is the first the first setting is going to be chroma smoothness it's going to be trying to to take that source that's 420, 411, 411 or 422, mostly 420 and 411, is going to try to take that input and it's going to convert it to 444 in order to improve <coughs> the, the, the color accuracy and, and to improve the color processing. So once we do, once you do that, everything that should have, uh, the, everything that had those uh, Chroma issues, especially with the. Okay, let me unlock this. Everything that had that chroma, those chroma issues, with the. With the different channels, the, the um, with the different channels spilling all over each other, is is gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be cured. So and when we start with edge clean, we just need we just start fixing these edges that are usually problem is when you have a uh, if you have worked with a lot of archival footage with a lot of like uh, old footage tapes with especially in the tape source when you go to the to the edges especially this type of uh, this type of edges uh, high contrast edges they start to having some issues with the with the um, 
with some you can start to see some allies so allies seeing some some jagginess on on those edges so if you if you use edge clean we can start cleaning those only those edges and we have we can determine exactly how much we want it we want uh to are those edges large are, are those details large are those frequencies like big big or small and we can start uh, working this uh depending on, on the on the size of the of the of the edges and then the next one is going to be the deep block the blocking is that you know when you're working with mpeg footage with um all the compression algorithms uh, we are using macro blocks in order to divide the picture and then and then use it for like compression so when we use the block we can smooth those the inside and the outside of the of of the blocks so we can we can jump in like uh, i usually what i when i'm doing this i i, I like to jump yeah like zoom in into a picture and then see exactly especially when i'm seeing like i don't know a, a, a face or some some feature that will help me trying to 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 time exactly how, how much of this of these settings do i need to punch in so if i go if i go here yeah this is a mixture of exact exactly how much do i want here this is gonna be project based it's gonna be you have a different eye you may have a different like conception of how much grain or how much uh, noise that you want to have in your pictures but for me it's working this this is working okay and then the next one is going to be the banding the banding is is trying to fix those banded issues that are that are caused by having low bit and low 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 color depths in in our in our footage because sometimes this wasn't even eight bit this was six bit or even you can see it some type of uh, especially in, in some gradients. We don't have any gradients here, but we have these uh, flat areas that may start to get colored because we have a lot of banding between the channels. So if we use banding, we can start softening softening these these areas. We can yeah we can go all the way and we can destroy it exactly uh, we can stream mo most of the of the high frequencies but if we go like really soft we can only fix what we want without destroying most of the picture and then finally we can do some some sharpness and contrast if we want to improve the the look the final look of the book this is kind of a post um post fix trying to improve the, uh, the the sharpness and the contrast if we want to do it. and also we can add some noise either either either, either colored or um, black and white if we want to to to, to use dpo decompresses the final step in this particular case i wouldn't use dpo decompresses the final step because we can we still have some a lot of like uh, grain uh, a lot of noise still left we maybe we can use here a, a dpo clarity or a dpo grain in order to finish the job but we have dealt with the all the compression artifacts that that's what i was uh that was our main concern here so you can see it here yeah the difference major. the next one that's gonna be this is one one of the ones that's really helpful and especially when you're working with otts when you're working with uh deliveries when you're working with netflix disney whatever everything that everyone that has a uh, a uh, quite uh, a quite true uh, QC process, quality control process. So you may see this uh, because of the um, of the sensor, the, of the sensors, uh, the camera sensors, because of the heat, because of many issues, we start seeing this kind of dots on the on the on the on the sensor on the that starts to go in that starts going bad so they don't have a, they don't have they don't hold the charge anymore so either they become a color a, a, spe a specific color maybe red green or blue or they become white because they don't have they don't carry any charge at all so in order for for you to see that we need to zoom in because probably you're gonna not gonna see them but they start they are like this they are like white dots 
or green dots or different color dots that stand out because they don't move. The picture may be moving, but they don't move because they are exactly in that place in the sensor. So when the OTT wants us to, to deliver, I don't know, maybe an HDR picture or something that has high luminance, they may start to appear on the on the picture, even if even if it was even if it was colored, even if it was even if you had noise reduction, they may still appear on the final output. So we need to deal this. Usually they give you like a big list uh, of with the time codes at the specific places that, that they appear because they use uh, another software to detect them. But the way that we can use a, a, a quick and automatic uh, detection of these pixels and a quick and automatic fixes of this pixel is using DBO pixel. DBO pixel is gonna find exactly where those where those pixels are located, and you can even map them, mark them, so you can know exactly where they are. And for if you want to see more, you can increase the sensitivity you want to see less you can decrease it i know exactly that we i have three i have these four because i i have seen them before but if i go all the way i don't know here in the the algorithm is, is going to try to find more yeah it's going everything is a dead pixel now <laughs> so yeah it, this is a uh, you need to be aware of how many pixels you are working with uh, if you let them the algorithm work for itself you know, it's not going to yield you like uh, great results everything is going to be filtered it's going to take way too long to render but if you if you measure it, and if you know exactly where they are and if you know exactly um how how many of them are uh, you can start working okay and uh, the some of the settings that we have here is so for the safety either spatial or stationary because sometimes you have glints in the back in the background that can be confused as a as a dead pixel but they are not so we can set up a filter for for the for the dbo pixel to not recognize them especially uh, this happens a lot with the specular highlights uh sometimes you are let's say you are uh, shooting a a city in the night it's it's quite it's quite dark because it's because especially dead pixels appear in the night because of the high iso or the the lack of light in general so if you have a um a specular highlight that's in the back that's really small it may get confused and it may try to erase it as it was uh, if it were a, a, a dead pixel but it's not so we have these settings for for us to try and to uh, to exclude those to to not to not include them in the detection uh, we have this overlay that that makes us that helps us marking where they where they are we can either use this the, this born overlay or this pixel is going to mark exactly where is the pixel is located and we have two settings that we can use that are really useful one is the region of interest that is enabled by default this is going to be used uh, we can set up arrow or arrow i so we can uh, like use uh, it's like a mask is uh, telling the, the filter where to work exactly where to work, and we have a region of exclude that is the opposite. So we can tell exactly uh, the, the the DBO pixel where not to work is 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 off by default. So you have these these options, or if you are in Resolve or any most project, you can all also use any type of power windows or whatever in order for you to to control exactly where you want the the dbo pixel uh, detection to be uh, to be to be working okay and the last one is gonna you know the the next one is gonna be we have to a, a, a combo of two is gonna be dbo grain and Alongside DBO grain, I'm gonna show you as well DBO regrain RGB. So DBO grain is gonna be a, so so we have like three tools for dealing with with a grain and and, um, and noise. It's going one is gonna be clarity. This is one, one the other one is velvet, and this one is DBO grain. So when, when you're dealing with heavy grain like this, you, this is a this is probably this is a positive print. Uh, this is probably a 16 millimeter print, but this is an exhibition copy most likely because you can see the grain is really heavy. It's really coarse. And yeah, it, it may 
it made doesn't it may not look really bad but some people uh, especially um some algorithm some compression doesn't really like this type of of heavy grain and it's also not really something that you will associate with a with a clean 35 millimeter picture or, or 35 millimeter like um restoration so you may want to to decrease this to decrease or to remove this type of grain so the way that dbo grain works is that it has two, way, two ways of uh, working one is basic and the other is advanced and they kind of complement each other so in the basic mode we can just uh, we can have we have an, an overall setting that tells us that we, we want if we want to go to zero to 100 like zero being no 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 filter applied and 100 being completely applied and what type of film were we using in this type in this particular shot i am using i'm i'm using the film course because it's going to yield me better results for for this type of footage you can try uh, the different settings that we have here in the db grain maybe maybe film fine maybe film medium uh, we also have video either interlaced or progressive. This is going to be from a tape source or from a magnetic source. Okay, for let's say for this particular example, we're going to use film cores. If we use only the basic, yeah, it's going to yield us good results. It may end up uh, getting you some artifacts, especially in the sides here. They are not really, really damaging artifacts because you can uh, because the main subject is still um is still looking clear and it's still looking good but if you want to get rid completely of this of maybe of this smearing that's happening on the sides you may want to jump into advanced settings and on the advanced settings oh, okay this is locked wait okay we're gonna jump into the advanced settings in the advanced in the advanced settings one of the uh, the main advantages if we, we have set something on basic let's say we have set film course here on basic it's gonna fall it's gonna follow on that so we can start working on what we have already set in, in the basic mode so we can uh, adjust the temporal settings for each of the channels we can use a global a global uh, a global filter for a uh, global temporal filter uh, this is not recommended, but it's, it works. Uh, even you can use it for creative um, for creative purposes because you can, if you enable global and you go all the way, uh, you may start getting some smearing on all the channels. So you can use that for using, I don't know, maybe you want to like create some type of motion, a ghost that uh, helps you with your narrative, whatever. But for the purpose of this, we're not going to be using we can increase the special um, filtering in any of the channels as well. We, uh, let's say sometimes um, sometimes what happens is that if we if we look at the different channels, we use uh, the red, green, and blue. Sometimes uh, the blue channel has more um, has more green or has a heavier green. So we can increase um, the spatial or the temporal filtering on the on mostly on the blue channel so we can we don't have those that that heavy grain that the blue channel uh, creates and leave the the green and the blue the green and the green and the red on the, on the normal the normal settings the, but that's the that's the main um that's the main point of, of having these different settings by by channel so you can dial them in depending on how you want to work because most of the time you're gonna be you're not gonna be having the this all of the most the the three channels not, are not gonna have the same this the same the same content or the same resolution yeah as i as i talked uh as i was i was telling you yeah the, the blue channel has less resolution overall than the blue and the red than the, than the red and the green so and then if we go here to the final one we can start messing with the mixture between the spatial and the temporal filters we can either use more temporal filters less spatial more spatial or a mixture of both most of the time we're working on a mixture of both so because it works correctly 
but if the, your particular case doesn't have a lot of like uh, have, has a lot of like uh, ghosting maybe it starts having like uh, some type of issue with the um, with the movement with the with a lot of uh, motion you may want to change the settings really depending on the profession but let's 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 head it uh let's leave it as i, as I already tried yeah okay so we have probably uh, reduced most of the noise most of the grain here but let's say that you want to you want to you want to you want to create this output but with some of the grain remaining but but not not you, you don't want to be as, as clean as it is right now so that's where the other uh, uh, dbo filter uh, dbo fx come in, comes in this is the one that's called dbo regrain rgb so the good thing as the, with, with dbo regrain rgb is that we can match exactly the, the original grain or any type of grain that you, that you can imagine. If you have a, a sample of the grain, maybe you have a, a scan and that has the grain pattern on a on a gray board or on a, mostly, normally it's a, it's a gray board or, or in a, maybe on a leader lady or whatever. You, if you have a pattern that, that has the grain, we can match that to the, to, to, a, to another picture. So we have different settings here. We can, uh, we can either, we can use the, we can have the grain in the RGB uh, uh, using all the channels, only the green, only the red, only the blue. We can increase or decrease the saturation. So it can be colored grain or it can be more um, desaturated grain. We can increase or decrease the amount. For this particular case, I don't want it. I, I want the grain to be like a 35 millimeter negative, something like really fine, really, um, that can be that that is present, but it's not really noticeable in the in, and it doesn't affect compression as well. So, for the size, we can um, we can increase or decrease the size depending on the on, on the depending on the channel. Uh, I like to do the the um, increase the size on the blue because it's not it's it's normal. It's more it's common. That the blue channel has the has the uh, the biggest grain, and it has the usually the, the lowest resolution or, or the, lo the lowest um, resolving power. So I try to, to 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 imitate that when I'm when I'm using grain as well, so it looks natural. Same here with the sharpness. Try to make the sharpness a little less on the blue channel. And when we want to use the amount, especially uh, there's something. This is something here that you need to be aware because um, when you're working with, when you're working trying to, to to increase or to add grain to a to a picture, is that uh, and different from noise, grain uh, doesn't affect the, the 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 highlights and the shadows in the same way. It usually, depending on the on the stock, on depending on the on the process, the shadows usually get less grain, and the highlights they get more. So even if you have like a, even in even in a positive, you all the shadows are not as as dirty as as you may think when when you're working with uh, usually with digital formats. So I, I for me is usually I try to. I try to increase the grain on the highlights and decrease it on the on on the on the shadows on most of, of the of the cases. So we can go here and yeah, I know that grain is gonna be higher on the on the blue channel, something like this. This may not be like um, completely noticeable, but if you know exactly what pattern you are using for, for trying to match, it, this is gonna help you because you can also, you can, since you have a lot of control in what you want with the, with the, with the grain that you wanna, uh, with, with you wanna add. So in the end, the result is gonna be something that is, looks looks natural, looks, this, looks kind of the same as, a, as the original picture. 
And the one of the good things about DBO or Grand RGB is that it works really fast, even if I'm using a base Mac Mini M2 here, and it works really fast without any caching. So you can try whatever you want uh, with the different grain uh, structures that you wanna you wanna use for your project. And the last one that I wanna show is DBO Sharpen. So Sharpen is gonna be something that I uh, I probably gonna be using a lot of the times because uh, the DBO Sharpen or the Sharpen algorithm in in Phoenix and and the DBOs is really good without and it does it helps you to it helps you increase the apparent resolution of of most archival footage and it doesn't introduce a lot of the of the common artifacts that you can find on on a, on, the, on the most on most uh, sharpen sharpen sharpening sharpening filters that you find in different uh, software packages so in if we go by the settings we start going here and uh, if if we can we can set if the if the source is interlaced or progress or progressive we can dial up the strain this and let me turn this on one second okay and i want to turn this off okay So this is this is something that we can do live because it's, it works it works quite fast. Let me try to edit the cache. Okay. So you can see it. Let, let's fix uh, let's fix it on the on the face because this is the the main, the main thing that we wanna. Most of the time when you wanna when you're doing some sharpening, you wanna be fixating on the on the subject, not not really on the whole picture, but mostly on the subject. So here we can see the glint of her eyes start going up. If we, if we go with the special strength, yeah, we may want to be here because if we go all the way, we may create some type of borders here. So we don't want to do that. The crispiness is going to increase the, if you see it, the eyes is not really not so well in the, with the compression, but it's going to help, especially on those high, on these highlights, on these specular highlights that you have here to increase the, the contrast here. And the image noise level is gonna be, the, the what's the base noise level on the image? The, because depending on this setting, the the DBO Sharpen knows exactly how much or how how, how, how less or how, how much the, the filtering needs to, needs to occur. Because if we have a lot an image that has a lot of noise, we don't want to sharpen the noise. We only want to sharpen the, the content. So in this particular case, this is a DB source uh, from, from a tape. So it's not really, it, it was properly transferred. So it doesn't have a lot of noise. So we may go to medium. And then we can start in adjusting the trim here. We wanna to increase the low detail of the low frequencies. Yeah, it's working. The high detail is not doing a, a lot of things, so we might leave it um, to the default. The low light is going to be how much. Um, this is going to be a, like a, a like a tune up for the low, for the highlights and the and the shadows. So if we want then to affect everything, yeah, for the moment, yeah, we want to affect everything. We are not generating any type of artifact by doing by leaving them completely. Um, by using everything. So the, the output is going to be something that you may, is going to be really noticeable. Yeah, so you may say, Fabio, I don't like this type of stuff, um, this type of edges on the sides. So one of, the, one, of the, one of the many solutions that you can use and you can have is that you can create a mask. And you can create a mask exactly where you want the the filter to be working like the most, and then everything else could be softened or it may be excluded. So most of the time I want the face to be sharpened and everything else to be like for normal. So I just create a power window, type to try to track it if I want it. I don't really need to track it because this is a steady shot, but if you want, you can track it. 
and just place it where I want it, do the softening of the of the edges, and then let's see the results. Yeah, now every uh, most of the sharpening is happening on the face, and everything else is is the same. If we want to increase the size, we just need to increase the the power window. Yeah. So that way we can have both ways. We can we can have a sharpen image, a sharpen content, or a sharpen like subject, and without any type of ringing artifact, without any type of uh, artifacts that may be caused by the sharp by the extreme sharpness that we are using on a particular uh, on a particular part of the picture. So that's pretty much everything for the DBOs um, for today. Real. Well, thanks so much, Fabi. That's a, a lot to take in, which is fantastic. Seeing all of those effects is just, well, honestly, Sharpen was a huge one for me. I've seen it in action before, but seeing the difference mm -hmm. is just nuts. So again, um, again, for everyone who's joined, thanks so much for jumping on. If you do have any questions, chuck them in the comments and we can ask Fabio and Gus here. I mean, I want to kind of start one off. A bit more of a general question, but is there sort of an image issue, Fabio, for yourself that you're looking that you want a tool for something that you'd like fixed personally. Ah, can you repeat that? Okay, like, is there is there is there an image issue? Like this is for long term for future development uh, works. Is there something that you uh, like, on your wish list sort of thing? Yeah, I mean the best the 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 most that I have issues with is that um, sometimes when the some some of the sensors especially on the red cameras or the yeah especially on the red cameras on the black magic cameras when they start getting a lot of uh, heat when, they, when when maybe they keep running like for three or two maybe for an hour or two they start developing some type of like a mask it's kind of a like a black uh, black mask something like that i would like a way to try to fix that especially uh, on documentaries or something that needs to have a, a like a long take that yeah. that could develop those, those issues because I, i've seen i used I, I have that in the past and it was a lot of what a lot of, it was a lot of work because i had to use a lot of mask and everything mm -hmm. yeah so it creates kind of a, a vignetting right yeah it's like a vignetting it's exactly yeah. like it's, it's, it's yeah, really annoying that. yeah mm -hmm. is that on your list Gus, then <laughs> Oh, my list is extensive, man. <laughs> There's a lot of things, but yeah, I mean, that, that is interesting. The other one that we've been uh, doing some research as well, I mean, being, it's, it has been requested quite often, is the, the whole hair in gate. So when you scan something, but you end up getting some pieces of hair stuck in the picture, especially mm -hmm. on the edges, and that's really hard to clean up. So this is something that we're looking into it. We're trying to improve some of the tools like dry clean should be a little bit more effective when you have stains as well, especially from mold. So this is something else that we're looking into doing as well. Okay, real. Well, um, Cassiano asks, <laughs> can we have a quick comparison of Sharpen from Resolve and the DVOs? And if you can quickly show that, Fabio. Yeah, so I was just started doing, doing that. Mm -hmm. So, okay, right here we have the, yeah, this is uh, the, the previous output that we have, the the one with the with the DBO with the DBO sharpen, and this is the the DBO uh, this is the sharpen setting in Resolve. If we start going all the way here, okay, sorry, it was off. Yep. Yeah, problem is that the one we have in Resolve is that it's gonna sharp the the noise as well. So we need if we don't want that, we can use we can have like some type of. Uh, a frequency separation that may get us in the right path on the or the other way that people use this is that they use uh like um what's it called it's called uh splitter combiner node and then um uh, color conversion and then use only on the um, on the luma but mm -hmm. still that doesn't fix the the um, the issue that we have with the um, okay let's try doing fast while you're while you are working another on another on the, uh, okay why you be i want to be toro i want to be uh, 
put color space yub okay and it's gonna be use time so the, what usually people when they used to hear is that they use this type of separation so they can separate the luma the y from the cv and the cr and only sharpen the luma now mm -hmm. this is a common practice not not only in resolve but in nuke as well and most i think most packages yeah yeah but it's this is still the same it's still the same issue because we are sharpening the the noise uh, mm -hmm. you need to you will need to do some type of frequency separation in order for you to only sharpen the, the content that you want yeah. so that's the problem here so that right. that is my my that will be the the main difference between using the sharpen and on resolve even if you're using with the with the frequency separation no, we, even if you're using with the with only on the luma okay so that answers the question there um sebastian's uh saying that the linkedin quality is not so great so <laughs> so i apologize but it is in yeah. 1080p and it is being recorded so it will be on yeah. our youtube channel afterwards um and top it off um i know i know a man here gus has been recording a lot of tutorials <laughs> uh, which will be up on the youtube channel shortly so we yes. some small issues so there's a lot mm -hmm. of content to come um and if you do have any specific issues please just drop me a message um and then i can pass that on to gus and he can create a video or something for you afterwards exactly well. yeah just let me know we can report separate videos for specific issues mm -hmm. and uh chad jumps in and says uh is there a tool to remove vertical scratch from archival film oh that one exists well, within the the phoenix package we do have a scratch target too but we don't have that currently within the OFX package. Yeah, that's how you jump onto the Phoenix side of things, which again, you can check out on our website. And if you need mm -hmm. a hand, give Gus or yep. I a shout. Um, yes. We can help there. Um, any other questions? I've not seen any. Um, I hope it does answer everyone, but it is getting to uh, four o'clock here in the UK. So I think it's a, a good time to end. But thank you so much, everyone, for jumping on. I'd like to say, first of all, thanks, Gus, for um being here and not being able to answer the tech side of things and of course the man of the hour fabio again thanks for going through all of those i've learned a hell of a lot this afternoon which is fantastic um and you know we'll, again for everyone else this will be put up on our youtube channel so you can re-watch it again and again if you so wish if not make sure you do tune into the oscars this weekend i think there'll be yes. a more interesting thing this <laughs> to watch but thanks everyone from from what's here and we'll see you with the next one